All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is 7.2, our second section in our exponential functions unit. Uh, last section, we talked about exponential growth. Today is going to be about decay. Okay, so let's take a look at our things to know. Uh, exponential decay. Uh, this is opposite of exponential growth. Okay, um, in our case here, we are describing a decrease. So in the previous section, we talked about an increase of an exponential function. Today, we are talking about a decrease. Okay, so it is important that we recall what our standard form is. This is something that we must, must, must know. And remember, this can either be f of x in function notation, or if you wanted to say y is equal to, you could write that as well. But we have this a times b raised to the power of x. Okay, and so remember this a value, this is our initial value. Okay, so initial value. And then the b is our growth factor. So growth factor, if you want to write that in, you do have it in your other notes, but it is important to know. And then since we were talking about decay, instead of saying growth factor, we could actually call it a decay factor. But this exponential uh, standard form is going to be highly critical. All right, so we do have some restrictions in our um, definition, so it's important for us to know that. So let's go ahead and write that standard form here for each of these. We got f of x equals a times b raised to the x. We're going to have the same thing for decay. We just need to define our restrictions so we understand what's going on. So remember, b is that growth factor. And the rule is when we have exponential growth, that our b value must be greater than 1. Okay, It cannot be equal to 1. It's got to be greater than 1. And then our rule for the decay okay, is our b value has to be less than 1, but it must also be greater than 0. Okay, Remember, this is a compound inequality, so b is greater than 0. It cannot equal 0. It cannot equal 1. It's got to be some number greater than zero and less than one. So we're hanging out in between these two numbers. Okay, so this is where you're gonna um, have some examples. You know, if it's a decimal, you're looking at some stuff like 0 0.4, 0 0.1976. Okay, if we're looking at fractions, that means we got a little number up top and a big number down below. Okay, this lets us know we have something that is smaller than one. Okay, so Make sure to take note of those rules as we move forward. All right, so let's uh, take a look at example one. We want to just identify if these are growth or decay. Okay, and remember this is uh, determined by that B value. So regardless of what our initial value is, we're not really caring about any of these numbers right here. Okay, this does not indicate if we are a growth or a decay. We are simply looking at the B value. So right here I got 6 over 5. Okay, Since this is a improper fraction, meaning I got my bigger number up top, smaller number down below, that means I am going to be larger than 1. So boom, right here we have a growth. Alright, 4 over 7, I got the small number up top. That is going to indicate a decay. Okay, Don't let a fraction and a fraction fool you. Remember we're still looking only at this number here. 3 over 2. That numerator is bigger so we have a growth. Okay, And then 1.4 obviously bigger than 1 so again we have a growth. And then 0.7 over here gives us a decay. Okay, And remember that the definition of an exponential function means that we have a variable as our exponent. So all of these are actual exponential functions. All right, so now that we understand what they look like, we can identify them. Let's go ahead and try some other examples. All right, here it looks like they want us to fill out a table and graph the function. So remember, this is a good time to use that uh, graphing calculator. And if you don't have a graphing calculator at home, let me show you how you could figure out how to do this. If we look at our graph, okay, we're only in quadrant one, right? We have this block right here, the x-axis going to the right, y-axis going up, but we don't have any axis going to the left or down. 
So that means our starting point in this bottom left corner is a zero on the x-axis and a zero on the y-axis. So a good point to start with for x, we wouldn't want to use negative one. We probably wouldn't want to start over here. Good way to graph this would be to start with zero. Okay, and then moving on up, I'm gonna do one, two, and three. Okay, so if I were to plug in a zero for x, okay, what is a good way for me to solve this if I don't have a graphing calculator? I can simply pull up any old calculator here and we would just need to do orders of operations. Okay, um, oops, I need to be scientific, there we go. Let's make this a little bit bigger for you guys. All right, so if I'm doing a scientific calculator, I know that I need to plug a zero into here and I'm gonna be raising to the zero first. So I would wanna take this two and divide by five. So I could do that. I get 0.4, then I wanna raise it to the power of zero. Okay, so I'm gonna use this x to the power of y, and it's gonna show 0.4 raised to the power of zero. And then I hit equals, that gives me a one, and then I multiply it to the outside, and that is four. Oops. One sec, let me start that over. We said two divided by five raised to the power of zero equals, and then times four gives me four so here I'm gonna to want to put this four and if you recall from the standard form of an exponential remember we know that that a is our first value so here our first value is four so we can go ahead and plot this dot uh, let's go ahead and number these one two three four and five fix that up And if I'm only going up to four, right, this is a decrease, so it's probably gonna go down. I can probably even go by 0.5s here. So this would be one, 1 1.5, two, 2.5, three, 3.5. So your graph at home might look a little different if you did it by ones, okay? Remember, as long as you number it, it should look very um, similar in, in regards to shape. Maybe not how the size of your graph looks, but the shape. So we got our first point right here. All right, and then we could continue that process of using this calculator. So we could do uh, two divided by 5.4 raised to the power of one, hit equals. Then we can multiply this uh, times Four. Okay, and then that's going to give me 1.6. So I would want to put that here. 1.6. All right, let's do the next one. Two divided by five raised to the power of two. And then we're going to multiply this by two. And we're going to get 0.32. Uh, whoops. 0.64 and then last but not least we got 2 divided by 5 equals 0.4 and we're going to raise this to the power of 3 and then we're going to multiply that by uh, whoops multiply that by four. Then we get 0 0.256. 0 0.256. All right, let's go ahead and graph this. So our point at one would be 1 1.6. So right above 1.5, we're looking at a point. Two is 0 0.64. So that's gonna be right above 0 0.5. And then three is gonna be 0 0.5. Uh, 256 so a little bit over half and if you can see it looks like the dots are slowly curving down so let's see if I can draw this um, all right there we go so I tried to draw it the best I could and then remember don't forget your arrow tips so one thing I want you to think about and let me uh, type this up here for you 
All right, boom. So I got this little note here that says, notice how the graph looks like it will go to zero, okay? It will actually never reach zero. So this graph should just taper off and slowly just get smaller and smaller and it'll eventually look like it levels out, but it's not really going straight. It's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Remember, we do have an infinite amount of decimal values. So as you keep taking two-fifths of this next value, two-fifths of that next value, and two-fifths of that next value, it's just going to make that decimal really small, meaning really, really long, and many, many places out. Um, so we are approaching zero. Okay, so our, that's why our graph looks like it does this and then begins to taper out. So as you draw yours, you should never, ever, ever touch this line down here. Just make it look like it is moving to that area. All right, very good. So let's take a look at example number three. We have another function again here uh, that we need to graph. So this time I want to show you um, with the graphing calculator. All right, boom, got my graphing calculator up. Okay, so these are the important steps. Remember, if you need to clear and restore your defaults, um, in order to enter our function, remember we've talked about this, we want to hit the Y equals button, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and pop out this uh, this button here so we can see it. So what we want to do is we want to enter in, remember this f of x is the same as y equals, that's there on the left. So we are just going to type in everything that we see to the right. We have our initial value of 4. This time we are at a growth rate, or sorry, a decay rate rather, of 0.75. So we're going to type that in. And then we are going to raise this to the power of x. Remember to do that, we use this little caret right here. And then we use this button right here to type in that variable. Okay, now we could hit the graph button. It's going to show us the shape of the graph and, you know, how it should look in general. But remember, we want this table of values. And an easy way to do that is to use the function that is above the graph button. It says table right here in blue. So in order to access that, we're going to hit the second button and that's going to give us the functions in blue. So we're going to hit graph and it's going to give us our table over here. All right, so let's go ahead and enter in these values. We're going to use 0, 1, 2, and 3 again. Uh, go ahead and pause the video here, enter in these values, plot your points, and then draw your graph and see if it matches up with what I got. All right, good work. Welcome back. Uh, hopefully you got this with a much nicer drawn graph. I tried to draw it the best I could, but we are sloping down a little bit here. Uh, we didn't have 0.4 or 5, but we can kind of just estimate how this curve is going to go. It's going to just start going towards zero. Okay, so that is how we use the table on the calculator. All right, let's go to Example number four. So if we are given a table, we can easily write the exponential function. We did this in the last section. Uh, this time we are dealing with uh, dk. So what we want to do, remember, we always take our second term divided by our first term. So we're going to divide going from right to left. So let's just write this out so we see what we're doing. 2.7 divided by 18. Okay, and if you plug that into your calculator, I already did, I am going to get 0.15. Okay, so this is my decay vector. All right, so remember, we have our initial value. This is the easiest one to find. That is simply our first value, our f of x right here. So we got 18, and then our decay factor is going to be that 0.15. And then remember, we are simply using that standard form of a function, but we are just plugging in the stuff we know. We know our a value is 18, so we write that as such, and then we know our decay factor is 0.15, and we raise that to the x. Okay, and if you wanted to make sure, you could take 18 times 0.15, and then 2.7 times 1 or 0.15 and so on. And then also, if you want to double check your work on the calculator, type this into your uh, y equals and then see what that table looks like. It should match up with your table here. Remember f of x, this is the same thing as y. All right. 
so we talked about percent increase in the last section we also do have a percent decrease okay so remember this is the form that we use we have f of x is equal to a we always start with that initial value and for, for percent increase we did one plus the percent increase okay and remember we can call this r this is the rate of the increase and then we are raising that to the power of x so remember this is the rate of growth okay so this is our rate of growth and then the other thing that we need to know is uh, rate right this rate always 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 as a decimal okay and the way that we do this remember if we have something like 12.37 percent we simply want to take that percent oh that looks kind of ugly let's rewrite that 12 point three seven percent we want to take that twelve point three seven simply divide it by a hundred and that's going to give me point one two three seven so when we put this here make sure you are converting that percent into a decimal do not simply put that twelve so this should be one point one three two seven all right, and it works for the same as the percent decrease. Remember, decrease we are taking away, so we're just going to do one minus the percent decrease. Okay, and again, this is our rate of decay. Okay, and we also have a rule. Remember, this rate always as a decimal. And if we have an example, uh, let's do an example here. Uh, let's do three point, or since that looked like an eight, let's do 8.5%. And we would do 8.5 divided by 100, and that would give me 0 0.085. So remember, if, you, if you're not one who likes to move the decimal, just simply divide by 100, it's going to give you that answer every time and remember this is what you would plug in right here alright so there will be some percent decrease problems these are typically found in our word problems so make sure you understand how to do the percent increase and the percent decrease alright we do have uh, example number five here um, if we are looking for the percent that it increased or the percent that it decreased the first thing we want to look at is our growth factor or decay factor. Um, so we're looking at this value here in the parentheses. And I want to ask myself, is this bigger than 1 or less than 1? Well, we got 1.19, so this is going to be greater than 1. So if I am greater than 1, I am going to be a growth factor. Okay. So to find out how much percent did I increase, Okay. remember, I am doing one plus the rate of growth and that's going to equal 1.19 and if you look here this looks exactly like our solving equations that we did many many moons ago and to solve this right we would simply subtract this one from both sides and r would equal 0.19 but we want it as a percent so when we went from percent to decimal we divided by 100 to go back from decimal to percent, we would multiply by 100. So 0.19 times 100 is going to be 19. So I increased by 19%. And then remember that initial value is this one right outside over here. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our next one. We got 0.325. Does that look like it is bigger than one or less than one? It looks like less than one so this is going to be a decrease so remember our decrease is one minus the percent so we're going to do one minus the rate and that's going to equal 0.325 okay so the way that we do this remember i would subtract this one from both sides don't forget there's a negative here so this is going to be negative r and this is going to equal negative 
right? 0.3 minus 1, do it in your calculator, is going to be negative 0 0.675. Okay? And then we got a negative on one side, a negative on the other side. I want this R to be positive, so I simply divide both sides by negative 1, and R is going to equal 0 0.675. And again, I want this as a percent, so I simply multiply this by 100, and we get 67.5. So this is a 67.5% decrease, and then our initial value of 16. All right, I want you to get a, a, go ahead and pause the video here, try the next two on your own, and uh, come back and see if you are correct. All right, welcome back. So here we have 0.44, this is less than one, so I used the one minus R, and I ended up with 0.56 times 100. That gives me that 56% with an initial value of 11. All right, and then this last one, don't let it trick you. Um, here we have three, three is certainly greater than one, so with this one plus R equals three, minus that one, we get R equals two, and then you still multiply this by 100. So two times 100 is, 200 and we have a 200 percent increase so you can have something increase more than 100 uh, percent if you're making an investment you certainly want to have more than 100 uh, percent of an increase on your investment that would be a phenomenal return um, so don't let something over 100 percent fool you we will see stuff like this and then we got that initial value of three all right, very good. All right, moving on to our last example. We want to solve by uh, modeling uh, with an exponential function, and then we want to, so first we want to model it, and then we want to actually solve it. So this first one, it says, Mr. Martin purchased a clothing store. It had too much inventory. He just wanted to use the building, so he needed to get rid of all that merchandise. Um, it had 78,000 articles of clothing noted as C, and then it was decreasing by 4.9% per year T. So when they're giving you these variables here, this is your function, okay? So our function here is gonna be C of T. Remember, time is the independent variable, because um, we cannot change it or adjust it, so that lets us know this is gonna be C of T. So the first thing I should do is model this as C of T. Okay, now we need to figure out the rest of our model. Well, what would be a good initial value? If we look back, well, we started with 78,000 articles of clothing, and then we wanted to know how many are left, so it looks like this is our initial value. So we have our initial value of 78,000. Okay, and we are doing um, a decrease. Okay, it says it is decreasing. So we're gonna take that one minus, and we want that percent to be in a decimal. So remember 4.9, we gotta divide by 100. So let's do that 4.9 divided by 100. And that's gonna equal 0 0.049. So we got 0 0.049. And then our exponent, right, our function is C of T. So we're gonna put a T up here so now that we have modeled it we can go ahead and solve it because it is asking us something specific it wants to know what happens um, after six years if no new inventory was purchased so what we are simply doing is we are saying we understand the amount of time t is for time and we are looking at six years oops let's actually let's simplify this first so we can see an accurate representation of this model. Um, what is this 1 minus 0 0.049? Go ahead and do that on your calculator. I am getting 0 0.951 and raised to the T. All right, so let's do C of 6. And we got 78,000.951 raised to the 6. All right, and then now what I would recommend if you have your graphing calculator, uh, we don't need that. Let's put this one up here. I would just type this into the graphing calculator exactly like you see it. So let's turn this on. Let's go back to the home screen. 
and we have 78,000. We put this parenthesis, we got 0.951. Close that parenthesis, and then we're gonna raise this to the sixth power. And then it gives us 57,700.25. So we're a little over 57,700. So can we have uh, a fraction of some clothing? Um, not really, so we would want to say that there's about 57,700 left. So let's write that in. So after six years, we have about approximately 57,700 articles of clothing. So we can, articles of clothing. We can go ahead and write that in. All right, moving on to the next one. It says the value of an office copier machine V was purchased at 35,750 and it decreases by 8.5% per year T. Let's write a model and then find out its value after four years. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we did over here. Remember, we are doing V of T. Um, what did we start out with? Well, how much was the copier purchased for? It was purchased at 35,750 and we're doing a decrease so we got one minus remember 8.5 here we had 4.9 so we have a single digit on the left looks like we just add a zero so we're going to do 0 0.085 and we're going to raise this to the T okay so let's uh, simplify this real quick 35750 50, 1 minus 0 0.085, that's going to give me 0.915, right? And then I'm going to raise that to the T, and we want after four years, so let's plug in a 4 for our T, 35,750, 0.915 raised to the 4, and then if you crunch that out in your calculator, you should get, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I got 25058 so $25,058. And remember, if we are talking about money, we round to two decimal places and we use that dollar sign. We wanna denote that dollar sign. All right, I want you to try the next one on your own. Go ahead and pause the video, come right back and take a look-see. We'll see what we got together. All right, great work. Hopefully you got $6,369.80. Remember, round up. If that extra digit tells you to round up, we are talking about money. We are rounding to the nearest second decimal place. All right, ladies and gents, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you understand it. If you did not, please watch it again. Try these practice problems. The more you do, the more it sinks in. Remember, ask a friend for help, ask a teacher, anyone you can reach out to that is willing to help. We are all uh, in the same boat and looking for the same goal to accomplish. So I will catch you on the next one. It's been a pleasure. Peace out.